and it is Lakers and Heat time. And I guess, Legs, you were saying in the break there, finally we had a big marquee game that lived up to the hype. It was fun. G great game, a lot of shot making, a lot of defense being played down the stretch. Ultimately, though, I think Miami Heat a little bit sharper. We Lake came in. Oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say Lakers had won eight in a row. Heat had lost five in a row. Yeah, table and, is set. And we're waiting to learn something about Miami. Can they beat the big boys? Now, yes, they beat the Lakers earlier this season, but that's about the only top-level team when you look about five or six deep that Miami's beat. Here we go on this night. LeBron James ends the first quarter like that. They're up three. Ridiculous hang time. The double clutch with the one hand. Very George Gervin, maybe George McGinnis-like. Just gets it off before the horn. <laughs> Second quarter, L.A. down three. Ron Artest the steal. He can defend. We know that. He finds Kobe Bryant for the lay-in. And he had an impact in this game. And I've been waiting to see this out of Ron Artest most of the year. He's been playing like this during their winning streak, defending, rebounding, and being a physical presence. Who's been getting hammered for a lack of low post moves? Chris Bosh, closing minutes of the fourth. Lakers down three. Kobe. Oh, that is deep, and that's part of his 24. Wow. I mean, off the catch, Dwayne Wade puts a hand up, just turns and says, you got to be kidding me. Kobe's another big three. Under two to go. Wade the steal. LeBron finish. Right oh, by him. Wow. That, now, legs, that's closing. We keep hearing these guys don't have a closer. Well, they've had one all along. They've had a closer all year. Dwayne Wade's been one of the best closers in the league throughout his career. He just hasn't been given enough opportunities to close games. So Wade had 20 points, and there, loose ball foul on our test. LeBron made his free throws, closed this thing out. Big three, Bosh with 24, Wade with 20, James with 19. You get another 12 from Mike Miller. It was indeed a bit of a team effort. For Miami on this night, Mario Chalmers chipped in with nine. Bibby a couple of big threes, and so we see Miami get a third straight win, a second this season over the Lakers, and oh, by the way, clinch a playoff spot. Not that that was something that was ever in question. So here we are again. Uh, legs, ultimately, Miami had been questioned for not having an inside game with Bosch, but he was good, not all on the inside, but again, 10 of 17 from the floor. What do you take away most when you look at the Heat tonight? Well, the biggest thing I took away is when you look at those highlights down the stretch, what's the one thing that we did not see? We did not see LeBron James isoing in the middle of the floor or taking contested pull-up jump shots, which is what the Heat have seemed to rely on most of the year when they've been in this situation. I loved what they did down the stretch tonight. They either put the ball in Dwayne Wade's hands first if they wanted to iso or run a pick and roll and allow him to attack and try to get to the rim or – they put the ball in LeBron's hands. We didn't see much of it in, in those highlights, but he made plays for people down the stretch. I thought one of the most important plays we saw in the night was about middle of the fourth quarter. Miami Heat get an offensive rebound. It's kicked out to LeBron, and he is all alone behind a three-point line on the left wing, and he bypassed the shot and threw a bullet pass underneath the rim to Dwayne Wade, who made a reverse layup. LeBron James throughout the season would have taken that shot, and I think it's not his shot. You bait him into taking that. That's what you hope. If he's good enough to make that on a given night, you can't beat the Miami Heat, but you have to tempt him to shoot it. He passed it up that time to make a play for somebody else. He hit Chris Bosh on a couple of beautiful pick-and-roll plays in the fourth quarter with the game was still up in the air. I love the fact that he was doing what he can uniquely do, set people up, make plays with your vision and size. You have somebody else that can score. Let him go do it. They did tonight, and Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh both came through. So, Legs, is this the game now where the light bulb goes off and LeBron begins to acquiesce to other teammates like Bosh and, more importantly, Wade in this case? Well, you wonder how much of it was LeBron tonight, how much of it was Eric Spolster, how much of it was something that the team discussed, because there's no doubt that, that LeBron James had a different mentality, I think, in the fourth quarter of this game. And going forward, that's how it has to be. If they revert back to their old ways and they get in tight moments and they let LeBron James bring the ball up the floor and decide to try to be great against a set defense time and time again, then they're going to revert back to their old habits. And this team could get knocked out in the first round if they get the wrong matchup mm -hmm. if they play that way down the stretch. They didn't do it tonight. Hopefully they go and watch this film together as a team and they'll see, including LeBron James, how he can best be utilized on this team with that kind of scoring around him yeah. Be the guy that draws people. You draw so much attention. Make the game easier for others down the stretch. You don't have to prove anything anymore. You went to Miami for a reason, to play with a guy like Wade. Well, Let him do his thing. But can you make the argument that he now has more to prove than ever because of the way he went to Miami and the reasons and the motivation behind that? You, you can say he really has to prove something. Now he's got to deliver. He's got to prove that they, he can win. And to win, the best thing that he can do is to facilitate and allow others to be guys that can score the ball down the stretch. He doesn't have to do that. I think there are times, particularly during this losing streak, where LeBron James has tried to prove that he can be a late-game shot maker. 
We've seen him throughout his career make big shots. Obviously, he took every single one of them in Cleveland. We know he can make them, but far too often, he ends up taking shots that are not really his game or not his comfort zone. And I think moving forward, this team, maybe tonight, I think this could possibly trigger some momentum for them as they see how they close this game out. They defended. They had contributions from role players. They were great on the glass tonight, which has been a big weakness for this team. Yep. 18 offensive rebounds. But more importantly, it's how they handled the stress and pressure of the late game situation. He was special because he can draw people and find, and that's what he has to do with Wade and Bosch on your team. And Legs, you talk about late game situations here. This was a 88-88 game under a minute and a half to go, and we see defense for Miami. Wade forcing the steal, ends up with a ball, and he finds LeBron James. Now, this team, as it has struggled in the, in the last five games, at the end of games, you know, it seems to me I've always been, I've always been enamored with how major – level athletes, professional athletes, well-paid athletes who are where they are because we know they're stellar, fantastic, the best in the world. Sometimes it looks like they completely have no confidence. How can LeBron have no confidence? How can Wade have none? How can Chris Bosh walk around with his head down? How much of it is up here, and how much did we solve tonight? I sat on the set when, when Scottie Pippen was our colleague working here, and I sat on the set with him one night, and I asked him about that exact thing, and he said every year of his career, you're talking about a top 50 player of all yep. time, six rings in Chicago. He said every year at some point he went through a confidence issue. You're talking about one of the greatest players of all time. We all go through it, all players at any level, no matter your talent levels, particularly when you're struggling and there's so much of a microscope on you and everybody is scrutinizing everything you do and, and watching you in a way almost waiting for you to fail and you start to really just add so much extra burden that you don't need and makes it impossible to play carrying that kind of baggage around. And I think that's what this team has been doing right now. You know, tonight they got back to some of the things that they were doing well early in the year too. They hold the Lakers to 40% from the field. They were very aggressive with their defense. You saw the play by Dwayne Wade. They were, they were active with their hands. They did a great job out-rebounding this team by nine, a team that you look at on paper and say, wow, size is a big difference with the Lakers up front. They out-rebounded by nine, 18 offensive rebounds. So it's more than just whining about, well, who gets the ball at the end of the game? Yeah. That seems like that's all they have focused on. That's all the media has focused on. There's other ways to win basketball games. And tonight they did some of those things.